I would have this like, no worries, we've got this, I can do this. Whereas sometimes, nowadays I'm more open to just saying like, gosh, I don't know how to deal with that either. Hi, my name's Rowanna, I am a psychologist from Sydney, Australia, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been having a good day. I got another COVID test. I think this is my like fifth one or something. I don't think there's too much of a risk, but Sydney's just kind of been pretty much back to normal for like a month or two now, and we've just had a new case like two days ago, so everyone's kind of rushing to testing centers to hopefully just like squash this down and I also I have clinic tomorrow so I really want to be safe just in case and I was coughing this morning so one of the things I've been working on with YouTube is trying to remain as consistent as possible and it has kind of been difficult with juggling clinic and different types of work and I'm very much a tech newbie and so editing and planning a video and the research takes a really long time and so I have had trouble uploading consistently, but then I also wanted to keep this channel regular and I really wanted to answer some of the questions that you guys are asking and also just kind of be a presence. One of the ideas that I had was to do like a weekly 10 minute, I'm not going to go crazy with the editing and um, spend hours and hours on it, but it'll be kind of like an amalgamation of my thoughts or things that I might have learnt that week or a reflection on the therapy I've done or just general commentary on like early career psychology or something like that. So uh, I'm, I'll try and make it kind of useful, but to be honest, it's a little bit like a video diary. Welcome to the first one. Um, I'm kind of thinking I might call it therapy thoughts, but if anyone has any other ideas, I'd love to hear what you think I should name this weekly, like, powwow with you guys. Um, and it's it really is kind of something that, there's no structure to it. I'm really just creating this in my room. So whatever you guys think is useful, please let me know. Welcome to the first one. And I wanted to start with talking about therapist burnout. Quite a lot of you have left lots of comments like, I really want to become a psychologist, I love the idea of helping people, I love the idea of psychology, it interests me, but I'm really scared that I won't be able to uh, like manage the client load because it'll be so emotional, maybe you're a very sensitive person and you feel emotions really deeply, um, and so you're just afraid that you'll just get completely burnt out and it's not the right career. So today I'm kind of going to be answering some of those questions slash just providing a bit of my own experience. I felt like it was so apt for today because one of the reasons why I feel like I'm not uploading as consistently as I'd like is because I want to prevent burnout and I know if I overload too much it's really just a one-stop shop to feeling too tired, stressed and I can't do any of the jobs that I have and so balance is one of the biggest things that I've tried to adopt. I often go through periods of stress and, you know, maybe it's a, been a tough therapy day, you've had some tough clients, or maybe you were tired the night before, and you kind of drain your battery doing the process of therapy. Um, and short-term stress, I think, is still manageable and still a really typical part of work, and probably most people go through that. But probably a unique, for psychologists, thing is therapist burnout, which is when you start losing empathy for your clients and because it's a little bit overwhelming right it's a coping mechanism and so you distance yourself from them you're not effective at your job you feel stressed you're always worried in anticipation of going to work so those are some of the symptoms of if you're going through therapist burnout and it's surprisingly common i have chatted to a lot of supervisors and i think most of them actually i don't know a single one that that said that they've never gone through a period of burnout. One of them said that it's much more common in early career because you're still finding your feet, you're still dealing a little bit with like, oh my goodness, I know nothing. <laughs> kind of something that you really need to prepare for as a psychologist. And I know, I think I've reflected before that when I was studying, like I hadn't even become a fully fledged psychologist yet, I was burnt out in the middle of my master's training and so very, very common. In response to those people who say like, I don't know if I can deal with some of the cases, like same. Just in the last week or so, I've seen 
someone grieving the loss of a child, a single mother who was experiencing suicidal thoughts, relationship breakup after marriage of like 50 years or something. There's just so much life stress that you see as a psychologist and it's so interesting because in terms of clinical training we get trained on lots of different disorders and specific treatments for those but we don't have a module that's like divorce, coping with stress. Uh, and so it's so weird because I think sometimes I have that expectation of myself like you got to just know how to do everything but I'm still in my mid-twenties and I don't have that much life experience and I guess part of the early career journey is kind of coming to accept that I don't know everything but thankfully I don't have to know everything. It's funny because I think earlier on when I was studying I felt this immense pressure to almost have to pretend that if a client came in and they were like, you know, my husband and I are fighting and my child's screaming at me and I feel depressed, I would have this like, no worries, we've got this, I can do this. Whereas sometimes, nowadays I'm more open to just saying like, gosh, I don't know how to deal with that either, that's horrible, that's, you're gonna have to give me a session to think about it and I'll get back to you next time on that. Um, and so that's been helpful, just kind of letting go of the illusion that I need to know everything, which a little bit in part I do feel like is just the rite of passage for psychologists. No amount of training can prepare you for the full gamut of life's experiences. And people go to psychologists for the full gamut of life's experiences. And no matter how many years you get trained, I really don't think there's any way to prepare you for everything. And all the different nuances in different people's lives. And so yeah, it's just a really stressful job sometimes. Despite the fact that it's hard, I, like, don't get me wrong in thinking like, gosh, that's such a depressing, sad job. Like, why would anyone ever want to do that? Just because it's tough doesn't negate the fact that it's also incredibly rewarding. And it's a choice that I made to do this job and one that Right now, I don't have any regrets about the heaviness and the weightiness of some of the, you know, the life things that you're going to sit with are balanced by how rewarding and special it feels when you feel like you've provided a space for someone when they really needed just a safe space, non-judgmental, um, to have someone who's on their side, to be able to open up about something and be really brave for the first time in what could be like a whole lifetime. I saw a client uh, like an older gentleman early this week and he said I never talk about this stuff with my friends like I have never spoken honestly because you know I don't do that with I don't have that relationship with my guy friends and I feel like I can't speak to my wife before he said that I had this like little back of my mind inner critic kind of going like how on earth can you help this man he has so much more life experience than you he is so much wiser than you you really shouldn't be doing this. Ah, and then when he said that, I kind of thought like, yeah, like sometimes it's just having someone, even if I'm not doing some like cutting edge therapy and like really diving in, sometimes the work of a therapist is just to be there and just to listen and to provide that space, kind of like a sounding board for someone, a sounding board that has like evidence training behind it. But you know, we don't just sit there listening. It's whole other kettle of fish in terms of supportive counselling and how sometimes that's not so helpful. Anyway, in that moment that was kind of what he needed and that felt really nice and there are lots and lots of moments like that as well. And so that was really long-winded for what basically I mean is if you're sensitive and you feel people's emotions really strongly, don't let that deter you from becoming a psychologist. I'm the type of person who cries a lot, like a lot, <laughs> and was quite anxious as a child and I would definitely class myself as pretty high sensitivity and yet I can still do this job because I've kind of learnt that as long as I integrate self-care in that it can still be incredibly rewarding and fun at times and I love it and so if I can do it it really is one of those things where it's like you can definitely do it too. So one analogy I love a lot is 
this idea of, you know, on aeroplanes, they always say that you should help yourself before you can help anyone else. And so as a therapist, it is not at all selfish to work on your own self-care, because if you're not and you're burnt out, you can't help anyone else. And so that's one of the reasons why I've set my schedule up where I have adult therapy um, and then I have like a break like an admin day and then I have child therapy and then I have a break and so I've actually worked in breaks into my schedule to make sure that I have downtime. I can definitely say that when I first started this I and I still do sometimes cope with the fact that I feel like I'm a bit useless and like I'm working three full-time days a week and that is so much less than what other friends are working but I've also kind of given myself grace and gone like if I were to work five days or even just four days full time, I probably couldn't do this job properly and it's a process and maybe when I am more experienced I can build up to four days but I need this right now and I'm proud of myself for setting that boundary. Whether the boundary be that you need to stop all work at 7pm or that you don't bring the work home with you. Therapists are always trying to figure out what their personal boundaries are to make sure they don't get burnt out just want to share a bit of my one. So I always have days between my therapy days. I'm always getting regular supervision. So it might be a little bit over average, but I'm getting one hour a week with my adult supervisor and one hour a week with my child supervisor. It's probably double what the like minimum requirements are, but it's really helpful because it kind of lets me get some cases off my chest and just have a space where I feel supported. I make sure to check in with friends if I've had a tough day and so Wendy, if you're watching, I love you so much. Uh, she's my best friend, but also in training to become a psychologist. For instance, yesterday I had a really tough case um, involving a girl kind of coming to realize that her boundaries were really pushed in a relationship. And we had a big talk about like consent and stuff like that. But it was really tough hearing that. Um, and afterwards I called my friend and just kind of like <laughs> um, and there was nothing that needed to be solved but it was helpful just to have that sounding board with her sometimes when she has cases she calls me as well and so having that social support around us as well is another really helpful thing I try my best to make sure I'm exercising regularly so whether it be dance or Muay Thai which I've started up and finally and probably most importantly for me sleep I'm one of those people who needs like eight hours otherwise I'm a bit Bleh. so <clears throat> I try my best to get eight hours at least and if I don't then I try and wake up a little bit later during the day as well oh this is a big one during the day as well I try not to schedule more than six six ish clients um, and it's kind of different for adult and child therapy but you really titrate how many people you see each day um, until you get to a point where you're not feeling bored and just sitting around which at some point when I was seeing four people I was kind of twiddling my thumbs but you're not drained and you feel like you're never catching up with notes and stuff like that because you don't want to get to that stage too. So that is quite a lot. Um, it was just kind of my rambling thoughts on therapist burnout and some of the stuff that I do. Uh, if you enjoy this or you have any thoughts, uh, feel free to let me know down below. I really enjoy interacting with you guys via the comments. It's nice to know there are real people on the other side of the screen. If you like this video and would like to see more, um, please do give me a like and subscribe to join me for more videos like this in the future. Thank you guys so much. It's been such a ridiculous ride, kind of, with this channel growing so quickly. I'm perpetually astounded by how many people are actually engaging with this. So. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. And I will see you next week. Bye.